All right. So what's going on, guys? Thanks for tuning into the first uh, for Zoom <laughs> Three Peaks Fitness Podcast. Today we have, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I messed up the intro already. I'm Coach Mark. <laughs> I'm Coach Lynette. <laughs> <laughs> and today uh, we have Mary Claire, one of our uh, longtime clients who's coming on and has agreed to tell her story. And it's a really interesting one. So thank you, Mary Claire, for coming on. No problem. Glad to be here. Thanks so much, guys. Yeah. All right. A quick explanation here. We're doing this one virtually because Mary Claire does not live in Columbia, Maryland, where our gym is. She lives out, uh, well, somewhere else. I won't tell <laughs> in case you don't want to know. But I live in the lives, mountains. <laughs> <laughs> she lives far away. So she was a virtual client, an online client of mine. She uh, did nutrition with me. So just a little background there. Yep, 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 yep. Cool. So we'll get right into it. So Mary Claire, uh, who are you? What do you do? Give us the rundown. Give us the, the 90 second the elevator pitch. <laughs> Who's Mary Claire? All right. Well, my name's Mary Claire. Um, a lot of people refer to me as MC. So Mary Claire MC. Um, I am a 30 something um, mother <laughs> of one. And I work in the higher education industry. I've worked in the industry for about 10 years in the financial aid uh, world in different capacities. Um, I am also a student currently of uh, Precision Nutrition One certification. I'm almost finished with that. Uh, thank you, Coach Lynette, for the inspo on that and Coach Mark. Um, I am also a dog mom um, to an English shepherd border collie who has my heart and keeps me active along with my six-year-old son. I'm, I'm pretty busy all the time. And uh, yeah, so that's, that's me. I'm, I'm a busy, busy woman. Yeah. So. A busy mom. Busy mom. Super mom. <laughs> Very cool. Um, so obviously, you know, you've been, you've been working out for a while, right? Ever since I've known you. And by the way, Mary Claire is also my sister-in-law, by the way. <laughs> um, so you've been working out for, for as long as I've known you. Mm -hmm. um, but what, like, I guess, give us a story. Have you always worked out? Like what motivated you to start working out in the first place? Uh, I have not always worked out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> when I was in high school, I actually had a job at a bakery and we were encouraged to eat whatever we wanted. And that high school girl that I was could eat whatever she wanted and did not work out and still was in great shape. Um, being a 30 something, you, you don't really have that metabolism anymore. Um, so yeah, I had to, um, kind of hone in more um, in my 20s and my 30s because I realized that I couldn't really eat that way. Just, number one, I didn't feel great. Number two, it uh, just wasn't great. So I actually started working out, um, doing like group fitness and I just really found like I had such a passion for going to the gym and getting my sweat on and working towards goals. I'm a very competitive person. So this was like up my alley from the beginning, um, you know, when I started working out, working towards things. Um, and yeah, I mean, I just not to be vain, but you know, I want to look good. And also um, I notice when I'm working out and working towards something, it really does something for your mindset. So that's been a big aspect of it as well. Um, keeping that healthy, happy mindset, mindset, getting the serotonin and endorphins from working out. So yeah, just that's it. That's nice. What's up? <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Very cool. So what sort of things then? So, uh, you know, as you've been on this fitness journey, what sort of things would you say have worked for you? Like what sort of things have gone really well in terms of, of your fitness? What's gone well for me is if I am either in a program or I have an accountability partner or a coach. Um, it is 
much harder for me to be self-motivated every single day if I'm not working towards a goal or having somebody to check in with. So mm. those things are really important um, for me and my fitness journey. Yeah. So having some kind of structure. Yes. Yes. Right. I am not good with no structure. If I have no structure, I just want to walk on the treadmill and, you know, take a lot of breaks and, you know, my phone, it, it just, it's not um, a good, it doesn't push me forward. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you, uh, you did really well with that. She was really good about checking in with me yeah. regularly and, and putting her, her daily uh, reports into the app. It was great. Mm -hmm. We collected a lot of good data and she, yeah, she made a lot yeah. of progress. Nice. That, that was very helpful for me, definitely. But it was not smooth sailing. That'll probably come up later on. It was mm -hmm. not smooth sailing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but the accountability got her through it. Mm -hmm. yeah. For sure. Accountability, having something, knowing what you're supposed to be doing instead of having yes. to figure it out on your own. Absolutely, yes. Okay, cool. And then like, so then on the other uh, side of the coin, mm -hmm. just touched briefly on it, mm -hmm. <laughs> what sort of things haven't worked for you you know what sort of things did you try that just it just didn't deliver any the, the results you were looking for what sort of things haven't worked for you um if I'm being strict if I'm being strict on a diet if I'm being strict on a workout plan if I am um just being too rigid mm -hmm. um I it it that's a surefire way of not working because this the sooner as soon as I mess up I don't want to do it. Mm. And that's part of that mindset too. Of, you know, if you don't have any flexibility, it's not realistic. Um, and that was a big thing that we worked with, um, with coach Lynette, um, you know, flexibility and working on small things and not being too strict about things and no food is bad food, you know? So it's just, it was a lot of changing the mindset that done is better than perfect. Mm -hmm. So was that like a tough transition for you to, to learn that, to, to, to not be overly strict? Yes. Very, yeah. very, very hard for me. I mean, I grew up in a generation where, um, you know, skinny, very skinny is, you know, that is the standard of beauty. Um, a lot of disordered eating um, in society, um, the way that you know, I grew up in a generation where there were, you know, like uh, diet pills and water pills. And I mean, not saying that I necessarily did that, but, you know, there's just like a very different mindset um, and it wasn't very healthy. So, um, and throughout the years, I've done lots of different diets. I've done keto, I've done, you know, the grapefruit diet, I've done you know, just shakes. I, it, yeah. so yeah. just a lot of disordered eating, um, ideas. And there was, that was a lot of what Lynette and I, uh, worked through, um, through my nutrition and fitness, uh, journey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Def I don't think you're, I think you're, I know you're not alone mm -hmm. in that regard. I think a lot of people even still to this day, I mean, it's, it's kind of like that all or nothing yeah. mentality, you know, it's right. that super strict, you know, got to be skinny, got to look a certain way, got to go all out and just completely not eat a single carb. And, you know, mm -hmm. that whole mindset is just really toxic. Yeah. And so I definitely commend you for being able to get over that hurdle. Did you find mm -hmm. that, that when you made that switch, when that, that light bulb kind of went off in your head, mm -hmm. what was that like? Like, how did that feel? <laughs> crazy it was honestly crazy because for my for so long I viewed um nutrition and working out in a certain way that ha it was all or nothing you know I, you should be always going on a diet you should you know you don't go to the gym every single day uh, no days off you know like you're not you're not doing anything. Um, I, I want to say one of the biggest things that, um, was kind of like one of those light bulb moments, um, when I was working with Lynette, um, in regards to working out, I was going through a really tough 
part of my life where my schedule just was so crazy and I wasn't able to dedicate the time to the gym or to a home fitness program. And I was just really feeling down on myself. And Lynette was talking to me about trigger workouts. And I'm like, what is a trigger workout? And she explained to me throughout the day, because I also work from home, you know, getting up and doing so many <laughs> squats or, you know, so many push-ups. And I it and basically explaining to me that throughout the day, you could basically do a, a workout. And I just was like, wait, what? I, I can do a workout like the whole day and not, and I don't have to just feel bad about myself that I'm not like doing this like 30 minute workout. And so it's just like having like these little moments. And I had so many of them throughout this journey where I'm like, oh, I can do it this way. Mm. And I'm, reaching my goal. I don't have to be like, you know, on this crazy plan that I'm, that's not going to work. So yeah, that, there was a lot of light bulb moments, but that was specifically one of them that I just remember. And I, I, I use it all the time. I'll be, you know, standing there brewing my coffee and doing squats and I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, you know, and you get results. You really do get results. I got results from doing trigger workouts and I still do. So Awesome. Yeah. It just feels good to, you know, not beat yourself up. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. So I guess, so this is a question for both of you then, you know, since you guys were working together with that, you know, you coach and Mary Claire, what are some in indicators or some identifiers that, Hey, maybe I'm st stuck in this mindset, you know, this like all or nothing mindset, as opposed to the the always something mindset that we always talk about, right? Like dial method, you know, how could someone who maybe isn't aware that they're kind of, they're trapped in that sort of mindset, how can, how could, what would you say are some of the telltale signs of being in that mindset? I have a couple answers, but I'm gonna let Mary Claire go first. <laughs> I specifically remember a time I had been working with Lynette for a while. And I remember giving her a little bit of an excuse about something. I said, I've, I've fallen off the bandwagon. And she goes, I think that sounds like an all or nothing mentality. <laughs> but I just remembered being like, oh my gosh, she's right. That is all or nothing. Like, and Mark, Coach Mark, as you just explained, the dial method, that was huge for me. That was a huge um, piece that we worked on. And that's just basically where you have a dial and from one to 10, uh, one being like, you do nothing and 10 being like, you do everything, you know, where do you fall within this dial? And it makes you feel like you can still do something like mm. it, you know, it doesn't have to be a one. And so it's really like this mentality of like, I am not a bad person. I can do as much as I can do. And I'm still doing stuff. And like, for me, like that negative feeling before like we worked through all these little tools was um you know I'm bad if I don't do this or you know it's crazy because you you shouldn't think of nutrition and fitness in a moral sense but culturally and you do and so yeah. like these tools really help me to feel like I'm not a bad person you know regardless I'm not a bad person but you know I'm still doing something and that just helps mentally um you know, having that dial and these different tools. So yeah, for sure. That was awesome. Yeah. So yeah, that was, that's a good segue to what uh, one of my answers was. If you hear, hear yourself saying things like, oh, I'm bad. I'm going to be bad using those words, then you're in the all or nothing mm -hmm. mentality. Mm -hmm. Another statement I hear from people is like, I can't because I can't do that because that's an all or nothing mentality. Instead, you know, like you were saying, Mary Claire, what can I do? What little tiny piece of this thing can I do? Another thing people say is, oh, I'm bad at that. And I even catch myself doing that. Oh, I'm bad at that. Instead of, well, is there some way I can improve? Is there some little piece of that I could do? Instead of just writing it off and just saying, I'm bad at that. I can't do that. Or I hate that. Just these very black and white statements. That's how you know you're in the all or nothing thinking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's so interesting because it turned, basically you want to, 
when you're in the all or nothing zone, right? It's it's pass or fail, right? Either either you did it or you're a fa- or you failed, mm-hmm. right? That, that that's like the line of thinking. But instead, mm-hmm. it's going to be exponentially more helpful to move away from that and become more solution oriented, right? So the question isn't, hey, can I make it to my 60 minute workout today? The question becomes, hey, how can I work out today? Mm -hmm. And using the dial method, if that just means, hey, look, all I can do is do, you know, 20 squats while, you know, when I drop little Jimmy off at soccer practice, that's all I can do today. My, my fitness dials a one, I got a crazy hectic day, mm-hmm. but tomorrow is a little bit more open. So maybe I can turn that up to a five and maybe I can, you know, go, go to the gym for 30 minutes. You know, it, it provides that flexibility, which is so important that allows you to fit fitness into your life instead of having to fit your life into fitness. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a huge missing piece for a lot of people. Mary Claire, it sounds like you've you know, you've learned that, yeah, that lesson, yeah. Time, that which is awesome, huge. which is why you got, so, which is why you got the results that you did. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was just like such a huge uh, piece for me. That was probably one of those major, you know, like milestones that I got to with Lynette. I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, it's not yeah. like a full all out workout in the gym or nothing. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, for sure. For sure. So then Mary Claire, what recommendations would you have for someone who, you know, is where you used to be, right? Like, oh, I want to, I want to get in shape. You know, I want to lose this weight. I want to feel better about myself. I've tried 86,000 different diets and none of them stuck. And I've done all these crazy workouts and nothing worked. Mm-hmm. I can't stick to anything. What recommendations do you have for someone like that? Mm-hmm. I would suggest working with a coach. Um, I think there's a lot of value in having somebody who is knowledgeable um, on fitness and nutrition and helping you to set small obtainable goals um, because I think that there is a lot of benefit with um, starting small, um, you know, just working on one to two things at a time. That's basically what I did with Lynette. Um, We usually would have every two weeks, one to two goals that I would be working on. And um, I think that's, you know, so helpful. You're, it's not overwhelming. You're not, you know, changing everything at once. You're, you're focusing on small things, you know, be it uh, with your nutrition, you know, adding just one or two servings of vegetables instead of taking things away with the gym, you know, maybe going uh, a half an hour or doing, you know, once or twice a week or doing trigger workouts. It's, it's when you work with a coach, they're going to be able to meet you where you're at and help you to move forward. So I would just say there's so much value in that. And if you're not able to have a coach um, also have an accountability partner or some sort of app where you are checking in. Um, but don't, you don't have to do it alone. You can, but I think that um, if you're anything like me, uh, you're going to get more benefit when you have that accountability. For sure. Yeah. Look for someone who, someone mm-hmm. who can help you, right? Because the only, the only thing separating, you know, where you are now from where you want to be is knowledge and skills and you so you Mm -hmm. have to find someone who has those knowledge and skills and learn from them right instead of trying to do it for do it on do it all on your own there's Mm -hmm. a very small i've been a trainer for a long time there's a very very small percentage of people who can actually do it on their own for an extended period of time there's there's definitely people who can but it's a very small percentage most of us um me included you know most people need even coaches have coaches most people need someone to kind of like coach them up and say, Hey, like this is yeah. what I'm missing, you know? Well, mm-hmm. look at Olympic athletes. I think they're like the, you know, the pinnacle of, you know, health and fitness and they all have coaches. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. yeah, every, everyone needs a coach. Definitely. So then, uh, Mary Claire, what goal are you currently working towards? I know you hit your original goal working with Lynette. What, do you, what are we working towards nowadays? Um, are you talking my original weight goal or are you talking something else? 
No, I mean, like, what are you, like, what goal are you currently oh. working towards right now? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am working towards finishing my certification for precision nutrition. Um, I've been taking it a little bit slow, but that's okay um, because, you know, one thing at a time um, done is, you know, what you better than perfect. So I'm also working on still just incorporating a lot of things that I worked, um, that I learned and worked with uh, Lynette, um, just daily practices of um, giving myself grace. I'm kind of in like a crazy season of my life right now, but um, just working on, you know, what I can do. Um, so for me, that looks like, you know, meal prepping and it looks like, um, you know, eating as healthy as I can. Um, however, still allowing myself to eat what I want to eat in moderation um, and um, working out uh, just, I'm doing some home workouts. So just staying healthy, hiking with my dog, being happy, being with my son. So that's just kind of what I'm working on right now, just, just living and <laughs> yeah, just getting by. Yeah. Can I pop in with an unplanned question? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the holidays are coming up uh -huh. and before you worked with me, this uh -huh. would have been hugely stressful for you yeah. right? heading into the holidays. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, that's not the case anymore. So like, what is it like for you heading into the holidays? Where's your head? Uh, what kind of plans and strategies do you have in mind? So it feels like freedom. <laughs> um, it just, I don't feel any anxiety or stress about going to holiday parties, um, you know, because I realize that there is freedom in being allowed to eat what you want to eat. And when you allow yourself to eat what you wanna eat, a crazy thing happens and you don't go crazy um, and eat uh, out of control. Um, at least that's that's what I've I've found um, working with Lynette. Um, when I've started to allow myself to eat the things that I wanted to eat, I had less cravings for them. So I just remind myself that um, I can eat what I want to eat, and I still do try to make the best choices I can make. Um, so that looks like allowing myself to eat something, but also looking at the food that's there and looking for food that I know is going to be good for my body. And that um, is basically the way that I approach um, the holidays and parties and, and, and honestly life at this point, you know, so that's awesome. So you enjoy it, but no guilt. Yeah, guilt, yeah. no, no guilt, <laughs> no guilt. <laughs> and you know, that's crazy, crazy, you know, very well balanced. Yeah, it's about balance. And it's about, you know, just really having like a healthy mindset and um, actually a lot of education about food, which I've learned through working with Lynette, and then also through precision nutrition. You know, once you have that knowledge, um, it actually helps you to make better choices and want to make better choices. So yeah awesome awesome yeah that's cool and i think that's a really good point um allowing yourself you don't have to cut out foods that you enjoy and in fact you shouldn't mm -hmm. right because if you just deprive yourself of you know if you say i'm not eating sugar anymore mm -hmm. no you're gonna eat sugar eventually and when you do it's gonna come back with <laughs> wrath and fury and you're gonna eat all the cookies and all the cakes and all the everything right so mm -hmm. allowing yourself giving you giving yourself you know, the okay, say, Hey, like, I'm, I'm going to eat this. I'm going to enjoy it. I'm not going to feel bad about it. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to move on with my life, you know, mm -hmm. is huge. That's a, that's a huge, another huge lesson um, that, you know, I think a lot of people need to learn. Yeah. Um, but cool. So, all right, last question we've got for you, Mary Claire. So what are three things that elevate your life? All right. So the three, the three things that elevate my life, um, I wrote this down. So besides your brother-in-law, <laughs> besides, besides my, my niece, my little niece, um, 
Oh, and my brother-in-law and sister-in-law. <laughs> um, the biggest thing that ele elevates my life, I would say, is peace and trying to center my life around peace. And that looks like planning to me. Um, I find that when I am more intentional with uh, the, the planning, such as like the food that I'm going to be eating, um, the this time I'm spending with people and who I'm spending time with, um, that really brings a lot of peace into my life. Um, and that also with planning um, can also include stuff such as journaling and waking up a little bit early to have, you know, me time, um, which also just kind of segues into like the next thing that elevates my life, which is self-care. Um, and I do stuff for self-care such as reading, um, listening to podcasts, and, you know, currently studying for my certification. And then lastly, the thing that elevates my life, and I want to say the most, is going to be my son. I absolutely love spending time with him. And the times uh, that really, I would say, mean the most to me is when I'm out in nature, um, taking him on walks and hikes with my dog. Um, I just find that I, ha I, I have a lot of peace and we have a lot of good conversation and it's also like a, you know, an exercise. And so that really elevates my life. And I try to, as much as I can be out in nature with him and with my dog. So nice. Nice. That's, nice. <laughs> that's so everything. planning, self-care yeah. and your son. My son. Very cool. Very cool. Very cool. Well, we appreciate you coming on. Is there anything else you wanted to, to mention to any of the listeners? Um, sign off. I want to say that I actually worked with Annette for a year mm -hmm. with my nutrition um, journey, and I was her first graduate. Yeah. And <laughs> I'm very, very proud, proud of that. <laughs> yeah, I'm very proud of that. Um, and I just want to say how much um, value I got from working with Lynette. And, you know, if anybody is interested in, you know, having somebody to work with, Lynette is just, she was so encouraging and such, a, so sweet. And so just, I, I felt like she was so accommodating to me too. Um, as far as working together with our schedule, with my schedule and her schedule. And um, it just was a really, it was a really great journey for me. So I just, I just want to kind of plug, <laughs> I want to plug <laughs> Lynette um, because honestly, it, it was a really, really great experience for me. Very life changing. So, oh, we can't like wait that. for you to pass that on. You've got lots to share as you become a coach. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Yeah. Awesome. 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 Well, cool. So that's Thank all we you. got. Mary Claire, thank <laughs> you for coming on. We appreciate it. No and uh, yeah, that's all she wrote. All right. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs>